Hello everybody, my name is Rajesh Durbal and I'm a triple amputee. Today I want to share with you my testimony and I want to do this because a lot of people don't understand my life story, don't understand where I came from and they see a lot of the accomplishments that I have done, that I can do, that I'm doing and they see me living life in victory but I want to share with you that life was not always victorious. Life was not always filled with hope and filled with joy and vitality and energy. Life was dark and life was dismal and life felt like it was one big mess and that no matter what I did, I always messed it up and that no matter how hard I tried to fit in, I never fit in. And for a long time, I felt really rejected from the world and from my friends, some of my family and the closest people around me. And it was very hard for me to accept that and accept myself and who I was because I'm a triple amputee and I don't have legs and I'm missing a hand and how can I ever fit in? How can I ever function in a normal society? And I struggled with all these issues and I wanted answers to why was I created like this? Why did I come out like this? Why was it me? Why couldn't it be somebody else? And why do I have to go through this? Because life was very difficult and life was very challenging and there were days where it was very dark and I didn't want to leave the house I didn't even want to step outside and it was hard to get up out the bed it was hard to continue to go to school and to be a part of society I didn't want any part of it I just wanted my life to be over with and I wanted life to end because the pain and the suffering and the hurting was never ending and it never stopped no matter where I went and what I did I always had pain and I always had suffering and I always was trying to fight through it and get through the day, get through the hours, get through the minutes sometimes. And for me, life was very difficult. So a long time ago, when I tried to kill myself, when I was about 13 years old, that's when my parents realized that I had a problem and that I was struggling. I was struggling with acceptance and I went through a lot of different changes. I went through a lot of different counselors and people that tried to help me and nothing ever took root into my life. Nothing ever really gave me the fulfillment and filling the voids and the holes that I had within me that I could that I could never ever get from these people. And we tried, they tried so much. We tried medications, we tried going away, we tried getting me into after school activities, we tried getting me to the right counselors, getting me in summer camps, getting me around positive people. But I still had that void and that hole that I could not fill. And it took a very long time. And when I got older and I graduated college, miraculously, right, after trying to kill myself and have no hope, I thought that maybe if I just became a better person, maybe if I just tried a little harder, maybe if I hung out with the right kids and I pierced my ears and I dyed my hair and I wore the clothes that everyone wore, or if I acted a certain way and spoke a certain way or looked a certain way, that I would fit in, that I would have some sort of closure with who I was and identify myself with other people if I fit in and truth of the matter is, is I tried all of those things and I still didn't fit in I was still made fun of I still felt like I didn't belong and I still felt like I was one big mistake so the question was is who am I and what's my purpose and why am I here and I tried to find that in so many different areas of my life in my relationships with women in my career, in my finances, in the luxuries and things. And I try to build up all of this happiness around me. But the problem was is that that's temporary happiness. So when the relationship ended, the happiness ended. When the car got old, then my happiness was old, it, it ended. When the job wasn't there anymore, then the happiness ended there. When the influence and the friends that liked me because I had awesome color hair or I drove a nice car, when that, when that ended, then guess what, the friendships ended. So I built up all this happiness with things that were not sustainable. And it got to a point where I was hit rock bottom. And this is the point where I realized that I cannot do these things on my own. Everything that I could possibly give myself is not good enough. Everything that I could possibly have and acquire and achieve goals, awards, prestige, money, cars, luxury vacations, homes, it wasn't good enough. 
there was something missing within myself and I couldn't feel it no matter what I did. And yes, on the outside looking in, I look picture perfect. On paper, I was amazing. I had an awesome girlfriend that was drop dead gorgeous, beautiful that every guy wanted to be with. I had an awesome job on Wall Street where I had prestige and power and influence. I had money, I had nice cars, I had brand new homes, but it just didn't fit right within my spirit. I knew that there was something more. So after I hit rock bottom after a relationship in 2006, I finally started going to church and I was raised in a Christian family but I never knew God, I never understood His Word. We just said what we had to do and did the rituals but I never understood why we did that. And I knew God was there but I never had a relationship with Him. I never knew Him personally. I never felt connected. I felt very, very numb when it came to that and came to that subject and when people talked about God, I had no way to identify with them. I had no way to feel that. I didn't know if I was supposed to feel something or if God was supposed to touch me and then the bright lights open up and then all of a sudden I could see clearly. I didn't know what to expect. And yet people explained all of this and I couldn't identify with it. So back in 2006, on Easter Sunday, I was going to church for a long time. Nobody knew. And I finally gave my life to Jesus Christ. And it was a miraculous undertaking. I literally remember it like it was yesterday because it profoundly changed my life. And I'm not talking about where the bright lights appear and then he descended from, from heaven and, and touched me. I'm not talking about something like that when he came and changed my life and when I gave my life to him. I'm talking about a moment where the burdens, the shame, the guilt, feeling inadequate, that, 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 that holes in my heart, they were filled up instantly with him when I gave my life to him. And from that moment on, I realized that life is so much more meaningful and purposeful. I didn't know exactly what it was I was supposed to be doing and how it was supposed to be more meaningful and purposeful, but I knew that it was more meaningful and more purposeful no matter whatever I did with myself prior to that moment of giving my life to Jesus. And from that moment on, I had a newfound sense of hope that life can get better, that life was worth living, that people can love me and love me as a person, not with a disability, but a person that's equally on level playing field with somebody with all their limbs, that I wasn't counted less than, but I was counted greater than. That even though I might be weak in other areas, I was made strong to, to strive and to become and to show people power and weakness. And yet I'm speaking to you, talking about it, right? But I didn't necessarily know that when I gave my life to Christ. It was a huge transformation. And when I transformed and when I gave my life to Christ, the chains were instantly broken. I was smoking cigarettes for 15 years. I was drinking, I was partying, I was hanging out with the wrong people. I had suicide tendencies, I tried to kill myself. I felt so empty, I felt so unworthy to be outside in the world, showing my hands, showing my legs, being out there. Something so simple. I took great amounts of time and energy to go and hide myself from the world and hide my legs, to hide my disability, to hide who I was as a person because I didn't see myself as beautiful. I didn't see myself as worthy. I didn't see myself as strong and confident. So my question to you is, do you see yourself strong, worthy, and confident? Or do you see your mistakes? Do you see your failures? Do you see what people say about you? Do you see all the negative criticism, the things that you tried and you failed? Do you see those things and only remember those things? You see, that was me. That's all I can remember of all the times where people said you couldn't go and compete and race and run. The times the doctors say that you're never going to be able to run, Rajesh, and that you're never going to be able to, to live a normal life and to have a job and, and be a contributing citizen to society. Or that you're not going to be able to join that team because you don't have your both hands. You don't have your legs. And yet you can't compete at that level. And I believed all those lies. And when I gave my life to Christ, all of that was just totally stripped away. And that's when Jesus said, you are not what the world says you are. You are what I say you are. And it's so profound and it's so such rock solid truth in my life that it's helped me do things that people can't even understand that I've done. I've done two Ironmans, first triple amputee to do that. I've spoken around the world a couple times over, touching millions of people to lead them to have more hope, to help them understand what life is all about, 
to help them get through challenges in life. I've climbed mountains, I've, I've produced documentaries, I do motivational speaking, I, I coach professional athletes, professional figureheads, I've met presidents of different countries, and I've met figureheads of different countries and led all their efforts to help influence their countries. And to go from a person that's, that's afraid to go outside, to afraid to show themselves, to a person that's put in front of figureheads, blessed, not just put there, but blessed in authority, is just something that I could never even do for myself, no matter how hard I tried, no matter who I made friends with, no matter how I conformed to different things, to try to fit in, to fit into the cool groups, I can get that. These things happened because I gave my life to Christ and I honored Him with everything I did. And that is the ultimate blessing. That's what's ultimately helped me to get to where I'm at right now. It's not the money, it's not the influence, it's not the good looks, it's not the signature smile or nothing like that. My health comes from the Lord. There are days where I don't want to wake up and there are days when I hurt, but I take one day at a time and I give honor to God and I am thankful for everything that I have, whether it be just the hair on my head to the smile that I have to the ligaments, my arms, my shoulders, my joints, my, my back, my nervous system, my digestive tract, whatever it is, I'm give thankful for it. And I always play that stuff forward. I always give back to more than whatever I receive. So if I'm having a bad day, I always look for somebody to build up. And that was just my testimony. That's what, that's what uh, helped me to become the person I've become. And it, I wish I could say it's easy. I wish I could say you give your life to Jesus and all of a sudden everything just becomes perfect and you can just plow through anything and every challenge. That's not the case. When you, be, when you give your life to Jesus, you become a, a strong warrior for Him and you're going to have more resistance come against you because now you're living on the path of righteousness. Now you're doing things above the standards of the world. You're living with authority. You're living the right ways. You're living according to the Ten Commandments. And to live that way, takes an extreme amount of courage, extreme amount of perseverance and solitude to learn how to turn away from things that are not according to those, those standards and to raise a level of standards in your life where you can forgive people, where you can love people that can't even love you back and that you could do things for people that can't do anything for you. We live in a world and society where we're consuming things and where we only love people unless we get that love back. Or well, we love people based on what they have or judging them and then, okay, we can love them because we, we, we know what they're about. But the truth of the matter is if you see somebody hurting out there or going to get run over and you don't know who they are, a baby, let's just say for example, and you don't know what that baby's background is, you don't know the religion, you don't know anything about the baby, but you see the baby in trouble. What's the answer? Are you going to go help that baby from getting run over? Of course you are. You're going to help that baby. So what's the difference of helping somebody who's begging on the street for food, who just wants something to eat, or a mom who's just gotten divorced and now she's trying to pick up all the pieces, or somebody who's just lost a loved one, or somebody who's just committed suicide and now their families are struggling and they're suffering. You see, we're all people that are suffering and struggling and we're trying to get moved forward. And this is my testimony. This is what... I play forward. This is what I do for people because this is what Jesus has done for me. And through that, I have the strength and the power to overcome anything and everything that is thrown my way in this lifetime. And that is an awesome, awesome promise to stand on because you know what? This world is always changing and it's constantly renewing itself. It's not ever becoming stronger and more powerful. It's actually dying. But there's a place call heaven and eternity where we're not going to have any sicknesses we're not going to have any struggling or strife or stress or anxiety or breakups or people dying or health issues or cancer or age we're going to have everlasting life with our father the creator the one who's molded us in our mother's womb and put his eyes on us before anyone has ever seen us and purposed us to do great things so that's my testimony that's what i stand on and the scriptures that really rock uh, my life and keep me solid and pushing forward is Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through, strength, through Christ who strengthens me and that is just a solid principle truth in my life that I always go to whenever I'm having a hard time and uh, that's my testimony so I hope I've served you well I hope you have a newfound faith and you understand more about who I am and how I've gotten to this point in my life and where I'm going is far out more reaching from where I've been so 
continue to follow me on my Facebook page, Rajay Sturbal. Check out live-free.net to get more resources, see our events, all my speaking engagements, all the uh, film releases that we're going to be having, and just get inspired. Read some of the articles. We have tons and tons of resources to help you get through life's hardest challenges. And I'm here to help. So send me a message. I respond back to everybody. And I'm here to help you. So I hope you see you guys out there at one of our events and to live with vitality, passion, and strength. So see you guys out there. Live free, live amazingly.